In this lesson, we're going to add in some final touches to our game to make it seem more vibrant and more alive. But before we do that, let's just add in a final piece of code to our rope script. You see, what we want to happen is whenever the hook touches the turtle, we want the hook to bounce and start heading back towards the top of the screen instead of just continuing straight down. To do this, we we'll just need to add in one more OR piece to our repeat until piece. So find your first repeat until piece in your rope sprite, click on the OR piece and drag it out and place it on the side of your script. Don't dispose of it because we're still going to be using it. Then head over to your operators tab and add in another OR piece. Then head to the Sensing tab and add in a Touching Mouse Pointer piece. Grab this piece and place it in the first diamond of your OR piece. Then click on the black arrow to bring up the drop down menu and select Turtle. In the second diamond of your OR piece, place in your first OR piece. And then place this entire piece back in to your Repeat Until piece. Now that should make our hook start heading back towards the top of the screen whenever it touches the turtle. Let's test it out. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. Now let's add in some final touches to our game. The first thing we're going to do is add in a background to replace th this empty plain white background. To add in a background, find this stage icon at the bottom of your screen. Below that, there'll be these four icons. The first one is the Choose Backdrop from Library button. Clicking it will open up Scratch's Backdrop library. There are a few uh, backdrops that are situated underwater. So just scroll down till you find them. Find one that you like. Click on it and then click on OK. And it will automatically be added into your game. Now the second thing we're going to do is add in some sound effects to our game. The first sound effect we're going to add is a background music that's just going to be looping in the background as the game goes on. This sound effect will be added in to our backdrop since it makes sense since it's a background music. Now to add a sound to your game, click on the sounds tab at the top of your screen. Now by default, all sprites and backdrops in Scratch will come with the pop sound effect. We don't want this one. So we can click on the little black arrow to delete it or the little black X. To add in a new sound, click on the first icon under new sound. This will open up Scratch's sound library. Now for our background song, we want a music loop. So in the categories, click on music loops. You can click on this little play buttons next to each sound effect to sample them. I already know which one I want, so I'm just going to click on it, which is the old song B, and I'm going to click on OK to add it into my game. But the song is not going to play just yet. We need to tell Scratch to play it in our code. So let's head back to the scripts tab. Then we're going to head to the events tab. We're going to add in a when green flag click piece. Then we're going to go to control and add a forever piece. And to play our sound, we're going to go to the sound tab and add in a play sound old song B until done. So click this piece and place it inside your, your forever piece. Now, if you play your game, you'll notice that your sound is now playing in the background. Only problem is the sound is a bit loud. So to fix this, we're going to adjust the volume of our sound. In your sounds tab, look for a piece that says set volume to 100%. Grab this piece and place it above your play sound piece then change the number 100 to the number 3. Now this will make our background music very soft 
and more ambient, more fitting for a background music. If you're finding this a bit too soft, feel free to adjust that number and find a number that you're happy with. All right, now the next sound effect we're gonna add is gonna be for our garbage. Whenever the garbage reaches the top of the screen, we want it to play a sound effect. So let's click on our garbage sprite. Then we're gonna click on the sounds tab. Once again, we're gonna delete the pop sound and we're gonna open up the sounds library. Now the sound that we want, we can find under animal and it is the chomp sound. So click on it and click on OK. Now let's head back to our scripts. We want this sound to play when the garbage reaches the top of the screen. Now the code that handles that event is here in our if y position is greater than 140 piece. So we just need to add our play sound effect somewhere in here. So let's grab it. This time we're gonna grab the first one, play sound chomp. We're gonna drag it and let's place it underneath the change score by one piece and drop it there. Now if we test our game and we grab a piece of garbage There we are. We have a sound effect that now plays. Awesome. Now one more thing before we call our game done is we're gonna add in a sound effect to the turtle. Whenever the player grabs him, we want him to play a sound effect as well. So let's just repeat the process of adding in a sound effect. We're gonna delete the pop sound, open up the sounds library. And for now, I'm just gonna use the same chomp sound effect but you can switch it up if you want to. So click on the chomp sound, click on OK to add it, and let's go to our scripts tab to now implement it. Now we want the sound to play when the player touches the turtle. To do that, we simply need to add the sound effect to this piece of script here. So let's add in the play sound chomp piece and we'll add it in underneath the switch costume piece. So now this sound will play and then the broadcast message will play. Let's test it. Perfect. So now our, sound, our game is pretty much complete. We brought it to life by adding in a colorful background and then we added in some sound effects to finish it off.